Different ways to add texture to your quilt, today on Quilting Arts. Bernina of America Incorporated. Bernina, made to create. BerninaUSA.com. Craftsy. Learn it. Make it. Craftsy.com. Havel Sewing. When you need to cut it close. HavelSewing.com. Hi, I'm Pokey Bolton, your host, and today on Quilting Arts, we've got three guests and three different ways to add texture to the surface of your quilts. There are many different materials and techniques for giving your quilts added texture. Ellen Ann Eddy is back with a continuation of last week's lesson. She has her own unique ideas on couching, including a discussion of the feet to use. Then, Jay Mafazio returns with text to textiles. From writing on fabric to a journal prompt, Jane will get you texting. Finally, Wendy Butler Burns helps us overcome the fear of free motion quilting. It's really easy, but that first try is a little intimidating as you forget everything you've learned about stitching. So let's look at couching. Well, I have Ellen Ann Eddy with me now. Welcome. Thank you. I love your quilts. You know, we're talking about texture today and your quilts always seem like a little furry and, and fuzzy to me because you, you put so much um, extra fiber on top of them. Yeah, I do. And so right now, tell us what we have on the table. We have some incredible yarns right here. And a lot of what I do is with threads, but I love adding the texture of a yarn mm -hmm. to things. And there are lots of different ways to do that, but the easiest is to couch them. Okay, so just couch them down on top of the quilt. Right, and different threads are, and yarns are different, so it's really nice that there's a wider range of different kinds of feet that accommodate them. Okay, well let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start with just a nice thin little yarn, and mm -hmm. we're gonna put that through. We're using an, a, an, a couching foot. Okay. And what it has, is a nice hole mm -hmm. right there. And that's where the, the thread goes Your thread goes through? right through there. Your yarn? Right, okay. your thread needs to escape. That's absolutely right. It needs to get through there or else you're gonna be caught forever. That's right, we don't want that. Caught forever, not good. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put that in. I've got a little line here I'm going to make through there. Okay. I have monofilament nylon in the top. Okay. I have a polyester thread in the bottom. Okay. That sounds great. And you will have the monofilament because you don't really want to see the thread on top. I don't. You just want to see the yarn. It's fun to see the yarn. Sometimes it's fun to see the thread. You mm -hmm. can do both. Oh, that's a good point. Now, um, why do you, you don't put the monofilament in the bobbin? Monofilament's a really strong thread. And so and it tends to, it tends to break things. Okay. So you don't use it unless you mean it. Now I notice that you just put the yarn through the I put it through hole. here. There's a, okay. there's a groove in back. There's a little groove here that guides it through. I have a zigzag stitch, which means it's going to cover it better. And I'm just going to wiggle around with that for a while until I'm entertained. You go pretty quickly. I do. Is that years of practice, or you just find that you get a smoother line if you go Both. faster? Both. You're going to get, you're always, it's like riding a bicycle. Riding a bicycle is not safer for being done slower. This is true. So let's and see what that looks like. There we are. Now we'll want to do a little clean up. But once we've cleaned that up. And that was up, your start, starting point. And once I'm done, I can take a little monofilament nylon when I'm done and just sort of. Oh, and just couch it down, whip it down. Make, it, make sure that it's not going anywhere. Uh-huh. Oh, that's really great. And so there are other kinds of thicknesses of There are of other yarns. kinds of thicknesses. Now that same foot will accommodate threads that are as thin as this. 
And here. as thick as this. And as thick as this. Let's put the really thick one on, and you can see what that does. Here's three different thicknesses of yarns. Mm -hmm. And it will accommodate all of those. It's very easy. Um, this time I did that with a red thread, so you can see the difference. Oh, okay, so this is with the monofilament. Right, so you don't have... And so, and this is with the red. Right. Oh, nice. It looks, did you use the zigzag stitch? Actually, I used a joining stitch. Okay. And I'm going to find that for you. What it is, is a stitch that goes down and mm -hmm. over, and then down and over the other direction. Mm -hmm. So when you have something thicker, if you're going down the middle, right. it catches both sides. Gotcha. Which okay. is gracious. That's good to know. So not always a zigzag stitch. You can play There's, around oh, oh, with yeah. decorative stitches You can too. do decorative stitches too. What you want to do is make sure you have a thread escape in case you're making a big lump with your thread. Mm -hmm. What your really tight zigzag stitches do is they make bulk. And there needs to be somewhere to go. It's like anything else. Gotcha. Let's grab a piece. I'm going to show you couching with this nice big thick stuff. This is just a uh, hand woven roving. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of that. I do a lot of machine oh, needle felting. It's great fantastic for, felting. for that. Great for felting. Great for this too. And my yarn is going straight down the center of my piece. I think you just need to hit OK. There you go. And that catches, this is a thicker yarn, so that catches even All the very the wide through. portions. Even the wide portions are down and safely where they need to be. Let's take a look at that. Wow. Okay. And you know, I never thought I could couch with this thick yarn. I could, thought I could only machine needle felt it. And no, how wrong was I? No. All kinds of to cool toys with that. Um, now this is a braiding foot. And what it's going to do for us is it's going to take a number of small cords and turn them into a braid. Oh. And it has all these little thread escapes there, these little channels. Okay. They have one that has five, they have one that has three. Mm -hmm. Three is a lot. So for this one you're using three? I'm using a lot and it has this great little bar and you load it. So mm. you load it with your threads and then you just run right down them. And again, our joining, foot is a, joining stitch is a really great stitch for mm -hmm. that. Okay. So we're going to load that up. So these are good for some, some of your colorful and variegated um, hand embroidery threads. These are hand dyed pearl cottons. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're a number five pearl. Okay. And I dye them myself because they're wonderful, but you can get pearl cotton of all different sizes. Absolutely. And we'll load that up. And it's the same formula, the monofilament in the top, the polyester monofilament in the Monofilament in the top, unless you want to have more color, at which point you add, there's a little slide here in the foot that lets us just slide right where it needs to go. And I think you'd said that you use a, the joiner stitch for this? We're using a joining stitch again. Okay. Um, those are interchangeable. We can use a joining stitch, a zigzag stitch. Um, any of those are available, and they all will do the job. That's right in its little loaded areas. So you keep the spools bar. of the thread closer to you? Well, you need to keep them from going somewhere, <laughs> wherever that somewhere might be. And we're going to just slide that whole mess on, but because the bar is holding it down, it's not going to go anywhere bad. And um, they're going to just feed very easily into a nice little braid. Oh, and you don't slow down for this one either. I don't really sew slowly. It just mm -hmm. really doesn't ever appeal to me. Oh, I can't wait to see what this is going to look like. Oh, wow. Very cool. And as you can see, it's a very different look from that. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's having a colored thread in top. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's a fun way to use up your, your hand embroidery threads. It is. And you can use the little bits of them, too, which you always have when you're doing bobbin mm -hmm. work. Now, this is a foot that's done originally for cutaway applique. Mm -hmm. And it comes with a cutaway appliance of some kind. But because it doesn't have the second toe, Okay. That second toe isn't going to get caught on this, and this is... Oh, these are beautiful. They are wonderful, and as you can see, they move around, so you can see? move them. And you can use these for, for laces. You really for could. This. You really okay. could. Um, this one is just left dangly, <laughs> and this one has been stitched down on both sides. But we're going to just put one down on one side, and what this is going to do is keep us from getting caught. Mm-hmm. Okay. And again, I'm going to use that joining stitch. It's helping us out right now. 
Does it matter what kind of stabilizer you use for this when you're couching? You need something. You need something. That is a stabilizer in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So most of us who quilt and quilt, you know, do our embellishment on a quilt surface will use our bat as a stabilizer. But for a lot of things, I'm going to put my needle over to the right. And what it's going to do is it's going to catch just on the edge where I want it to. And I'm going to move around just because I can. Now, do you have to have your feed dogs down for this, or does that matter? Your feed dogs are up for this okay. because you're marching it through. I your see. feed dogs are feeding this through. In a moment, I'm going to show you one that we aren't using feed dogs for, but this one is for feed dogs. Oh, very lovely. I can see how it would be fun to do some kind of seaweed or a seascape. I'm thinking that, yeah. Yes. I just picked this that yarn up two just, days ago, and it beautiful. was wonderful stuff. Now, I am going to drop my feed dogs for this next one. And what it is, is it's a darning foot that does couching. And we were playing around with it earlier, and I think it's always great to see what doesn't work as well as what does. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you need to know. I was trying it with the softer thread, and that's a chenille. Not enough stub substance, but look at what it does with that. And we're going to just pull those out. She preloaded my foot for me. Now this It's really, always nice to have helpers preload. Oh, I, I like helpers mm -hmm. of all sorts. This is a foot that's going to be a regular darning foot. It's got a little tiny zigzag we're going to use on it. It's going to accommodate a small zigzag. And so you just plop the yarn right through, through the, the hole, hole in the center. And it's got a little guider through here. Uh -huh. And we're going to go back to our zigzag stitch. because we're going to need that and we're going to do as as narrow a zigzag stitch as we can do because we don't want to break a needle. Of course, you can always test that by swinging your needle. That may be a little too wide. You can always test that by swinging your needle and seeing. I'm thinking I'm still a little close to the edge there. Now, I have dropped my feed dogs, so this time I am my, I'm the, my feed dogs. I'm the one moving things through. Okay. So it's more like machine, uh, free right. motion. Right. Oh. And it's doing something I didn't expect it to do, but I really like it. And it isn't what it did earlier, but it's dividing my thread for me. So it's just a matter of experimenting with the It's different... a matter of experimenting, and it's a matter of understanding, which I think is always true, that you're never in charge. And real quick, quickly, um, Ellen, you have one last example, but we've, we've run out this, of time. So let's just talk about what you can also... This is the ultimate couching. Okay. This is the ultimate couching. What I did here, this is my, my, the floor of my studio <laughs> right here. And I've taken a dissolvable stabilizer, and I've put that over it, and I've stitched it down with a regular darning foot. Oh, okay. And just um, put it together as a uh, stitched over it with big circles, a straight stitch. And when you're done, you just dissolve. Spritz and go. And that will take a little moment to... Uh, It'll wash right away. Be really beautiful. Well, Alan, this has been so much fun. Thank you for the lesson on couching. You betcha. Thanks. And I'll be right back with Jane. Jane.